U.S. six tougher rules for regional forces in Diyara, Congo. The working rules for East African Community Regional Forces in the Democratic Republic of Congo are going to be tougher if the U.S. gets the support it seeks from the United Nations Security Council for its proposals. According to Washington, the idea is to learn from the mistakes of the departing UN stabilization mission in the Democratic Republic of Congo, MONUSCO, and place stringent safeguards for troops not to violate civilian rights. Although the East African Community Regional Force may still leave the Democratic Republic of Congo by December 8th, after Kinshasa said it will not renew the mandate, the U.S. says the new regulations should be observed by any new forces deployed in the DRC. At a session of the UN Security Council on DRC on Tuesday, Linda Thomas Greenfield, US Ambassador to the UN, urged council members to avoid endorsing Greater Monusco support to the East African Community Regional Force without appropriate safeguards in line with UN policies to address human rights, accountability, and command and control concerns. These safeguards are vital to ensure we do not inadvertently worsen an already dangerous security situation, she said. Monusco is supposed to begin its exit from the DRC in December with the last lot expected to leave 12 months later. December is the month DRC is holding elections. President Felix Sekedi had reached out to countries in Southern African Development Community, SADC, having lost faith in the East African Community Regional Forces. SADC had not deployed troops yet, but the U.S. said any redirection of monies or resources from UNESCO should only happen if new missions buy into the new regulations. Monusco, which has been in the Congo in, since 1999, has itself been accused of violations, including rape and sexual exploitation. Last week, Monusco expelled some South African soldiers found culpable of sexual exploitation. Traditionally, the UN relies on troop contributors to punish their own soldiers, leaving a gap that critics say allows troops to get away with crime. In the DRC, however, the exit of these missions could leave a hole in security. Wang Jia, UN Secretary General's Special Envoy for the Great Lakes region, has warned of an alarming escalation of animosity between Rwanda and the DRC who accuse each other of fueling rebel activities. Mr. Wang presented Secretary General Antonio Guterres latest report on the implementation of the framework agreement on peace security and cooperation for the democratic republic of congo and the region and noted that no significant progress had been made in addressing concerns about deteriorating security act situations in the east of the drc rwanda and the drc he said continue to reinforce the military positions of both of both sides the absence of the direct high level dialogue and the persistence of hate speech on both sides North Kivu region is one again experiencing clashes between the M23 rebels and the Wazalendo self-defense group. The fighting could move closer to the borders with Rwanda and Uganda. Even the East African Community Region foresaid they had been ambushed by an unknown armed group that targeted the Ugandan troops in the mission. Rwanda and the DRC had reached some form of agreement in the Rwanda process where they agreed to de-escalate tensions, a necessary condition to support dialogue between armed groups known as the Nairobi process. Mr. Wang said both processes had broken down even though Kinshasa said it had 
honored its end of the deal. On July 27th, a Congolese soldier exchanged fire with a Rwandan Defense Force soldier in Lutagala near Goma in the DRC. These are also countless attacks, mainly targeting civilians. Between March 16th and September 19th, the M23 carried out 97 attacks against civilians, causing the death of 124 people, including 15 women and 11 children, says Gutele's report. The M23 is also said to have tried to extend its area of operations to the South Kivu province. The FDRL, which remains active in the east of the DRC, is said to be responsible for 17 attacks on civilians, resulting in 13 deaths, including one woman and three children. The M23 and FDLR are central to the continual teeth between Rwanda and the DRC. While Kigali accuses Kinshasa of backing FDRL, the latter accuses Kigali of supporting M23. The Rwanda process was supposed to enforce a ceasefire and cantonment. However, recent fights have disrupted that. Kigali and Kinshasa must engage in dialogue and build confidence pleaded the United Arab Emirates representative at the Security Council, France, on their part, urged that this dialogue includes respect for the cardinal principles of the framework agreement, that is the absence of support for armed groups, respect for the sovereignty and territorial integrity of neighboring states, and a commitment not to harbor or provide protection to persons accused of crimes and violations of international law. Zenomu Congo, representing the DRC at the Security Council meeting, stated that as the council meets, the Rwandan Defense Force and its M23 terrorist supporters are still occupying positions on DRC territory. Robert Kayina Muller, representing Rwanda, adds that more than 120 armed groups, including the FDRL and its dissident groups integrated, according to him, into the Congolese National Army, currently occupying the east of the DRC. Kigali's representative accuses the DRC of a lack of political will, as evident by its failure or the rather refusal to reproduce the threat posed by foreign armed groups, among others.